What's up everyone, this is Afar. And this is Tim. Welcome back to our channel where we react and discuss the topics shared by you guys. And if you like our content, subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date and you don't miss out on our latest videos. Yeah, leave your video recommendations in the comments or on our IG. The link to our socials are down in the description below. And without further ado, let's get started on today's video. Let's go. What's up everyone? What's up? This is our video reaction to Mehdi Hassan. It's an Oxford uh, Union debate titled Islam is a Peaceful Religion. This is something that was recommended to us and the person that recommended to us names on here on the screen. Sorry, it's blocking your face. <laughs> but yeah, uh, make sure that you guys also put your recommendations down because we do react to uh, what you guys want us to, right? So, so you can block my face with it. Yeah, <laughs> and we're going to get to this. We haven't seen this. It's going to be our first time. Let's see what this brother has to say. Let's get to it. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Assalamu alaikum. Lovely to see you all here tonight. We are having a very entertaining night, are we not? With some very interesting things being said. Uh, from the other side of the house tonight. It's like, um, it's like a court. <laughs> let me begin yeah. by saying, as, well, Oxford as, is a a pretty old university, as a representative right? so. of Islam, I would consider myself an ambassador for Islam, a believer in Islam, a follower of Islam. So he's going to be talking profit. on behalf of so in that who capacity, is, is he let me begin by I think maybe he's just talking about it. For the Bali bombings, I apologize for the role of my religion and me and my people uh, for the killing of Theo van Gogh for 7-7. Seven, seven. Yes, that was all of us. That was Islam, <laughs> that was Muslims, that was the Quran. I mean, I so astonishing, astonishing, astonishing claims uh, to make in the very first speech that on a day like today where the Conservative so Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is having to come out and point out that these kind of views are anathema. And I believe you're trying to stand for the Labour Party to become an MP in Brighton. If you do uh, and you make these comments, I'm guessing you'll have the whip withdrawn from you. But then again, UKIP's on the rise. They'll take you, the BNP. They might have uh, something to say about your views. Being a savage. By the way, 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 it's not a factual point, since we heard a lot about the second speaker, about how backward we Muslims all are. On a factual point, you said that Islam was born in Saudi Arabia. Islam was born in 610 AD. Saudi Arabia was born in 1932 AD. So you were only 1,322 years off. Not bad? Not bad start there. Uh, talking of maths, by the way, a man named Al-Qawarizmi was one of the greatest mathematicians of all time, a Muslim, worked in the golden age of Islam. He's the guy who came up with not just algebra, but algorithms. Without algorithms, you wouldn't have laptops. Without laptops, Did Daniel you know Johnson that? tonight wouldn't have been able to print out his speech in which he came to brit yes. us Muslims for holding back yes. the advance and intellectual achievements of the West, which all happened without any contribution from anyone else other than the Judeo-Christian people of Europe. In fact, Daniel David Levering, the author of the Pulitzer Prize-winning historian and author of The Golden Crucible, points out that there would be no Renaissance, there would be no Reformation in Europe without the role played by Ibn Sina and Ibn Rushd and some of the great Muslim theologians, philosophers, scientists in bringing to Europe. As for this being our university, I will leave that to the imagination as to who is our and who is there. Uh, I study here too. Um, an astonishing, astonishing set of uh, speeches so far making this case tonight. Uh, a mixture of just cherry-picked quotes, facts and figures, self-serving, selective, a farrago of distortions, misrepresentations, misinterpretations, <laughs> misquotations. Uh, when you're, when you're Daniel talked about when you're, Oxford, when you're, yeah. Yeah. which got me a lot of flack, where I talked when you're about a student of Oxford, the anti-Semitism right? that is prevalent These are in some highly parts of intellectual religion, it is. Uh, of course, I didn't say in that piece that it was caused by the religion of Islam. In fact, uh, modern anti-Semitism in the Middle East was imported from, finish the sentence, Christian, Judeo-Christian Europe, where I believe some certain bad things happen to the Jewish people. In fact, Tom Friedman, Jewish-American columnist in the New York Times, told me in this very chamber last week that he believed, had Muslims been running Europe in the 1940s, six million extra Jews would still be alive today. Ooh. So I'm not going to take lessons in anti-Semitism from shots. someone who's here to defend the Judeo-Christian values of a continent that murdered six million Jews. Uh, moving swiftly on. Moving swiftly on. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Well, I'm about to make that point. No, 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 I'm about to make that point. You're right. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you 110%. 
That is my point. I don't think Europe is evil or bad. I'm a very proud European. I don't want to judge Europe on the basis, but if we're going to play this gutter game where we pull out the Bali bombing and we pull out examples of anti-Semitism in the Islamic community, then of course I'm going to come back and say, well, hold on. I mean, look, let's be very yeah. clear. Daniel here was a last-minute replacement for Douglas Murray, who had to pull out. And Douglas and I have a well-documented differences, but to be fair to Douglas, as to be fair to Anne-Marie and to Peter, atheists. Atheists see all religions as evil, violent, threatening. What the problem I have with Daniel's speech is that Daniel comes here to run this robust defense of Christianity, forgetting that his fellow Christians, people who said they were acting in the name of Jesus, gave us the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition, the anti-Jewish pogroms, European colonialism in Africa and Asia, the Lord's Resistance Army in Uganda, not to mention countless arson and bomb attacks on abortion clinics in the United States of America to this very day. Yeah, true. I would like a little bit of humility from Daniel then first. Then it's like there's and everything, Other communities you know? and yeah. other faiths on violence, but terror, so far as and intolerance. Really focus on, like, Muslims, but, Muslims, you know? no thank you. But I would say this, to address the gentleman's very valid point here, I'm not going to play that game. I don't actually believe that Christianity is a religion of violence and hate because of what the LRA does in Uganda or what, uh, what crusaders did uh, to Jews and Muslims in Jerusalem when they took back the city in the 12th or 13th or whatever century it was. I believe that Christianity, like Islam, like pretty much every mainstream religion, is based on love and compassion and faith. I do follow a religion in which 113 out of the 114 chapters of the Quran begins by introducing the God of Islam as a God of mercy and compassion. Yeah. I would not have it any other way. I don't follow a religion which introduces my my God to me as a God of war, as some kind of Greek God of yeah, wrath, that's the uh, as a God of hate mm -hmm. yeah. and injustice. Not at all. As Adam pointed out, you go through the Quran and you see the mercy and the love and the justice. And yes, you have verses that refer to warfare and violence. Of course it does. This is not a motion about pacifism. I'm not here to argue that Islam yeah. is a pacifistic faith. It is not. Islam allows military action, violence in certain limited contexts. And yes, a minority of Muslims do take it out of that context. Yeah, but is it religious? Well, we talked about Woolwich. Daniel and Anne-Marie have suggested that it's definitely religion that's behind all of this. Well, actually, what I find so amusing tonight is we're having a debate about Islam. And the opposition tonight have come forward. We have a graduate in law, a graduate in modern history, a graduate in chemistry. Uh, and, you know, I admire all of their intellects and their abilities, but we don't have anyone who's actually a, an expert on Islam, a scholar of Islam, a historian of Islam, a speaker of Arabic, even a terrorism expert or a security expert or a pollster, let alone to talk about what Muslims believe or think. Instead, we have people coming here, putting forward these views, putting forward these sweeping opinions. Listen to mm -hmm. Professor Robert Pape of the University of Chicago, one of America's leading terrorism experts experts, who, unlike our esteemed opposition tonight, studied every single case of suicide terrorism between 1980 and 2005, That's 315 right. cases in total. And he concluded, and I quote, there is little connection between suicide terrorism and Islamic fundamentalism or any of the world's religions. Rather, what nearly all suicide terrorist attacks have in common is a specific secular and strategic goal to compel modern democracies to withdraw military forces from territory that the terrorists consider to be their homeland. Yeah. And the irony is, when we talk about terrorism, the irony is that the opposition and the Muslim terrorists, the Al-Qaeda types, actually have one thing in common. Because they both believe that Islam is a warlike, violent religion. They both agree on that. They have everything in common. Osama bin Laden would be nodding along to everything he's heard tonight from the opposition. He agrees with them. <laughs> the problem is, the problem is that mainstream Muslims don't, the majority of Muslims around the world don't. In fact, a gentleman here started quoting all sorts of polls. Gallup carried out the biggest poll of Muslims around the world of 35,000, 50,000 Muslims in 35 countries. 93% of Muslims rejected 9-11 and suicide attacks. And of the 7% yeah. who didn't, they all, when polled and focus grouped, cited political reasons for their support for violence, not religious yeah. reasons. And as for Islamic scholars and what they say, well, Daniel talks about our University of Oxford. We'll go down to Oxford's Centre for Islamic Studies, get hold of a man named Sheikh Afifi Al-Akiti, who is a massively well-credentialed and well-respected Islamic scholar who has studied across the world, who in the days after 7-7 published a fatwa denouncing terrorism in the name of Islam, calling for the protection of all non-combatants at all times and describing suicide bombings as an innovation with no basis in Islamic law. Go and listen to Sheikh Tahir Al-Qadri, one of Pakistan's so most famous Islamic scholars, point. who published a 600-page yeah. fatwa condemning the killing of all innocents and all suicide bombings unconditionally without any ifs or buts. 
There's nothing new here. This is mainstream Islam, mainstream scholarship, which has said this for years. You don't go out and kill people willy-nilly in the high street or anywhere else on a bus or a mall based I like on how he used big words the Quran that you and then incorporates any willy-nilly context, any understanding, the any interpretation or any For the people commentary. that don't understand. <laughs> Please. Well, it's... it's I didn't say it doesn't happen at all. I never said it didn't happen. I don't blame Islam. Yes, it's a very good point. And a lot of us, a lot of us are campaigning against that. And we're campaigning against it in the name of Islam. We're campaigning against it in the name of various interpretations of Islam. Anne-Marie comes and scares us with her talk of Sharia law. I would like to see the book of Sharia law. It doesn't exist. People argue over what Sharia law is. And you empower the extremists by saying there is only one version. You empower them all. I don't believe you should get interruptions, Anne-Marie, so I think you should stay there for a moment. Several here's, countries. Here's what we're dealing with. Here's what we're countries. dealing with. We are dealing, I took your point, I took your point. Here we are dealing with a 1,400-year-old global <laughs> religion <laughs> followed by 1.6 billion people in every corner of the world, a quarter of humanity, of all backgrounds, cultures, ethnicities, and yet the opposition tonight wants to generalize, stereotype, smear in order to desperately win this debate. And here's my question, if we're going to generalize and smear. If, okay, people say yesterday's bombers and we've got to be careful, there's a trial going on, were yesterday's attackers, sorry, motivated by Islam? Big debate. I don't believe they were. Let's say they were. Let's say Faisal Shahzad, the Times Square bomber, was motivated by Islam. Let's assume, for sake of argument, uh, that Richard Reeves, the shoe bomber, was motivated by Islam. If Islam is responsible for these killings, if Islam is what is motivating these people, and Islam is therefore not a religion of peace or religion of war, then ask yourself this question, why aren't the rest of us doing it? Why is it such a tiny minority of Muslims are interpreting their religion in the way that the opposition claim they are? Let's assume there are 16,000 suicide bombers in the world. There are. Let's assume there are for the sake of argument. That's 0.001% of the Muslim population globally. What about the other 99.99% of Muslims who the opposition tonight either ignore or smear? The oh, reality yeah, is true. that the rest of us aren't blowing ourselves up tonight. The reality is that the opposition came here tonight not worried about the fact that me and Adam might pull, pull open our jackets and blow ourselves up tonight because we're followers of a warlike warrior religion which wants to take over Europe and Daniel's university. The <laughs> issue is this. <laughs> can tell us tonight, and Peter Atkins is here, one of our great atheist intellectuals, can tell us tonight, can they can answer this question tonight, why don't the vast majority of Muslims around the world behave as violently and aggressively as a tiny minority of politically motivated extremists, then they might as well give up and stop pretending they have anything relevant to say about Islam or Muslims as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just say this to you, think about what the opposite of this motion is. If you vote no tonight, think about what you're saying the opposite of the motion is. That Islam isn't a religion of peace, it's a religion of war, of violence, of terror, of aggression. That the people who follow Islam, me, my wife, my retired parents, my six-year-old child, that 1.8 million of your fellow British residents and citizens, that 1.6 billion people across the world, your fellow human beings, are all followers, promoters, believers in a religion of violence. Do you really think that? Do you really believe that to be the case? They say that in the Oxford Union, the most famous debate was in 1933, when Adolf Hitler looked out for the result of the king and country motion, where they voted against fighting for king and country, and Hitler was listening out for the result. Well, tonight, 80 years on, there are two groups of people around the world who I would argue are waiting for the result of tonight's vote. There are the millions of peaceful, non-violent, law-abiding Muslims, both in the UK, Europe, Asia, Africa, and beyond, who see Islam as the source of their identity, as a source of spiritual fulfillment, of hope of solace and there are the phobes the haters the bigots out there who want to push the clash of civilizations who want to divide all of us into them and us and ours and their ladies and gentlemen i urge you all not to fuel the arguments of the phobes and bigots don't legitimize their divisions don't legitimize their hate trust those Muslims who you know, who you've met, who you hear, who don't believe in violence, who do want you to hear the peaceful message of the Qur'an as they believe it to be taught to the majority of Muslims, the Islam of peace and compassion and mercy, the Islam of the Qur'an, not of Al-Qaeda. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg to propose this motion to the House. I urge you to vote yes tonight. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Oh, he's well that spoken. Really well yeah, spoken. for like obviously he's I guess from Oxford, so he's gotta be well spoken. But yeah, he just came in there, and just mic drop and left. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> he dropped a lot of great facts, right? And a lot of um, things that you can you can really um, like have a conversation 
with others about and yeah. and you know really look at the essence of all religion right so yeah like every religion is trying to um, teach people to do good exactly right and be humble and 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 worship our creator right yeah. so and i think like i think that people get lost in um in 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 the actions that others have misinterpreted um yeah. and and done bad things from it and and focus on that negativity where um, the fundamentals of that religion is being overshadowed, right? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, because from all types of religion, there's th- there's been wars. There's been, yeah. you know, I feel like people gotta be able to like uh, separate like the religion from like the human nature, you know? Exactly. Because like, although there's wars that are attributed to like religion and stuff like that, and are caused maybe because of it, sometimes it's just human nature you know like people have this innate uh kind of uh i guess need for war you know and like it's always been around like even now there's some stuff happening around the world exactly you know but uh i guess people got to be able to differentiate between that because there is a lot of like hate towards people more so nowadays i feel Mm -hmm. like it's becoming more aware of the hate towards muslims like the blacks the asians there's a lot going on yeah and i think So like the you know the wars and stuff like that it has more to do with like our our greed yeah right of because course. we Just fight for land resources right? you know exactly we like and like I feel guilty of this I feel like sometimes like I don't appreciate what I already have you know yeah. like because you I want also, the next thing but you yeah. don't appreciate what, yeah yeah like you, you we're always trying to want more yeah. for ourselves and and just be full <laughs> of like. Um, like living a better standard of life, yeah. but we forget that we could be in in a worse off situation, and living a worse life than, than than what we already are. And there are people who are having you know a hard time and struggling with their, uh, their existence and their life. Right. So yeah. a lot of people they just don't like to imagine that or they don't imagine it and i think that's also the problem right because you got to be able to put yourself in other people's shoes to be able to understand it and just a lot of people because of their ignorance they're not willing to put themselves in other people's shoes and imagine for a second like what if i was homeless and i didn't have anything you know but yeah it's a it's a great uh speech he gave um I'm I'm really curious. Yeah, yeah I'm really curious to to know what the opposition had to say. Yeah, I right? would like Cause, to see because they were atheists, <clears throat> right? So they didn't believe in any type of religion at all. Yeah. So I'm really curious on what their rebuttal was and what we could do a reaction what, to that. What they points want. they were trying to focus on? Yeah. And uh, and and yeah. <clears throat> so, and <laughs> at the end of the day, just looking at just looking at their reaction, I feel like there's a sense of them feeling guilty. Yeah. And not really, um, not really focused on Seems like the they, point that they're trying to make, because yeah. they were they were generalized, yeah. um, right? That's what uh, that's that's the perception that I that I got from it. But I'm really curious to know. Yeah, it seemed like the audience was on his side too, Mehdi's side. But yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, like if you guys want to see like a full reaction, I don't know, maybe we could react to like the opposition, see what their claims were and stuff like that. We could definitely do that. And if you have any other sorts of reaction videos for us to check out, let us know and we'll definitely get to those. Put it down in the comments below. Yeah. And if you want to follow our social media, do that. That's where we're going to be letting you guys know what videos is coming out next. So you guys are always in the loop. All right. Until next time. Peace. We out.